Cereal, where do you stand on it at this point in your life? Love it. Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes go. What? Yeah, man. Sunday, I knew Sunday, it. I knew bro. you were cereal I work guy. out every fucking day. I deserve a bowl of cereal bowl from cereal. time to time. With Almond whole milk. milk, by the way. I don't care if it gives no! me if it gives me tits. Get I the- want them. I want tits. Clip it. Use that. You're missing out, Jess. She left at the worst possible time. <laughs> we're killing. We're fucking killing. This podcast is gonna win an Emmy. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash all good things. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash all good things. This episode is also brought to you by ShipStation. Ship more and grow more with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and sign up with promo code NASH for your free 60-day trial. That's two months free. Visit ShipStation.com, click the microphone at the top, and type in code NASH. This episode is also brought to you by EveryPlate. Get EveryPlate for just $1.49 per meal when you go to EveryPlate.com and use my code NASH149. That's just $1.49 per meal on your first box by going to EveryPlate.com and entering code NASH149. Uh, wait, okay, guys, we're here with Dane Cook. Yeah, let's well, start. Welcome to the podcast. This is unreal. Let me just personally, you know, Bobby Lee starts this podcast. He goes, don't talk until I'm ready. So I'm going to do that today. I'm going to pull one from Bobby Lee. Okay. I'm really excited. I'm ready. Okay. (laughs) Uh, I'm just excited, Don't put any music under that. Don't put it. There should be nothing around that except just like that beautiful sound of silencia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Silence is dead. Sounds like the first five years of my career. I got so much to say to you. I've watched you... um, I remember MySpace. I went through that. I watched your in, <laughs> enormous rise. Um, I, I, was, I, was, I was talking to somebody yesterday. I said, what are you, you going to say to Dane Cook? And I was at dinner last night. I go, I go he's, he's been to the pinnacle. You've been to the pinnacle right. in your life. I'm and here to report back. <laughs> Please report back. <laughs> what happens? Is it all uh, You get orgies? in the room, right? You get in the inner circle, right? Here's the thing. You get in. Yeah. There's a key. And once you get into that very inner, inner, inner circle, guess what? It's empty. Yeah. There's a chair. There's a couple of bottles of water. You could tell somebody else cool has been there, but it's really a very, very strange and lonely place once yeah. you make it to the upper echelon of whatever they say is the top of a career. It gets lonelier. It gets lonely at the top. It gets lonelier. It gets weirder. It gets, uh, there's more uh, people that are trying to um, it, it somehow like uh, coagulate into your success there it, it is the most um it's like speed round rapid fire end of a game show for years when you're in that where you're just kind of like I'm trying to keep up I'm trying to keep my cool trying to make yeah. sure i'm when all you really want to do is like say to the fans are you having a good experience because i'm having fun and then all the noise around it makes it like uh not to say it's all bad but it's it's pretty it's pretty wacky yeah once you make it there yeah what are you most proud of in your life? Most proud of? Yeah. Man, damn, dude, fuck. You just came at me with something I wasn't... You gave me, like, the, the goosebumps of enthusiasm. The most proud of? Man, probably just doing it at all. You know? Having I was balls. Just having the... I don't even know if I would have had the balls, but it was... I've told this, so I'll tell, like, a hope, hopefully interesting version if you've heard it before. I used to go to Catch Rising Star in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Yes, I know. To I'm watch. But I had a lot of anxiety i'm an anxiety anxiety riddled kind of human being not as much now as then a lot of um uh like social anxiety my mom was phobic i got a lot of that like everything when did you realize you had anxiety because like, oh. when we were growing up anxiety was like what woody allen would talk about yeah like, oh my anxiety and then it became right. like a real thing it's like a real problem when did yeah. you realize v- really early on yeah i mean i was already identifying like i was terrified to go to elementary school yeah. i was sick physically sick like couldn't like i was shaking in the morning the first thing i thought of was i need to be around people and strangers and so i realized it as soon as i i don't know like at a young age so you weren't a cool kid as you're a kid <laughs> no 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 way i was the wallflower i was the star wars geek i had one friend named eugene and he was kind of the heavy set kid that like he took a lot of the hits and i kind of just stood next to him and then like after everybody left was like Sorry, I couldn't help. I was scared too. <laughs> um, 
so no, I was I was not the cool anything. Um, and that made you funny. But I was observing everything. Yeah, 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 I was yeah. like a uh, probe droid, and I was absorbing human behavior and the way teachers behaved. And like I was really like so tuned in because I wanted to be like other people that I think I was just observing them to try to go, how do, how can I be that confident? How can I insert myself in those conversations? The way that kid just walked up to that locker and started saying, Hey, da, da, da. I was none of those things. I had a similar thing. Cause I, I, I would, I don't really have time for that story, but if you can go to the next question for me and maybe you could like do like a, a later edit okay. by yourself. Can we pick maybe this up after hat. when Dana's done? Is it going to match? <laughs> I had a similar thing when uh, I, would, I would perform in New York and do characters, and I did pretty well doing these characters. And then one night in L.A., I went to, remember Luna Park over here? And um, I said, I'm just going to go up as myself and try. And that, for me, I went up, once I did it, I started bawling. I started bawling. Yeah, the, the next morning, I drove to the beach. It was so emotional for me. When you say you went, you went up as yourself, you mean like you went up? I went up as Jason Nash. Uh, okay. I wasn't going up there as, a, as the coach or as the fireman or no, whatever. And yeah. that, that was wow. so tough for me to, to be myself. <laughs> very, very difficult. Yeah, which you would think to be yourself should be so easy. It, as years go by, the magic of stand-up, if you, if you stick with it and it sticks with you, is the more introspective... If I add introspective into observe and report, that's a funny thing. Now let me tell you how I feel from it. That's like next level. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of comics miss. It's where you can watch comedy. I don't know if you do this. Like you can see somebody and be like, man, this, this person has all the elements, but they're missing that one little piece. Yes. And normally what I see in that is they're just not letting them in enough. Right. Let them in a little bit more. You're telling you, us all this stuff, but tell you, us about how, you. How do you let people in more? Where I started to figure out what, I did a crying bit that Marty Culliner directed when I did Vicious Circle, and that was like 05. And my mom was sick with cancer. Yeah. And she couldn't come to the fucking show, and I was so upset that she couldn't see me at Boston Garden yes. when she saw me playing laundry mats and addicts of Chinese food restaurants. And she was too ill. She was in Delray Beach, Florida, and she couldn't make the trip. And I had a bit about crying. And it was, a, it was a funny bit story about just like the things that you do when you're really sad. But I was really sad that my mom wasn't there. And the bit took on a new meaning because I was really telling people that I'm looking in the mirror and I'm like, I'm like this is how I came to this piece of material because I'm sad about my mom. Yeah. So anyway, it was um, in that moment and then seeing the edit, and, and then the reaction for years, people saying, in my lowest moment when I feel really, and people have told me some real grim stuff. They go, I think of what you said in that bit and how you kept saying, I did my, I did my best. Yeah. That one credo we hold on to that we say when we cry. Everybody's got their weird thing you repeat. And mine was, I, I, did, my, I did my best. You're on stage crying? I'm, I'm as close to crying as I can be in the bit. Fuck but I'm man. finding pieces that are even more organic because i'm really letting it come through me because i'm like my mom's going to see that. i'm going to bring this footage to her yeah. or it's going to air and and it allowed me to go to that introspective place yeah. the real dane cook with the material and then the fans emboldened me over the years by being like that means so much to me that i was like oh that's what i always need to do uh, i have to have pieces of material where i tell you i'm broken yes I, i'm or i'm awesome and owning moments where you're like I'm the shit, and then owning the moments where you're like, I feel like shit. I think it's even tougher to own the moments where you're uh, the shit. You think it's I think that's I think that's hard for people. I, but I know they want to live vicariously I, through you in those moments. I, it's hard for me. It's hard, I, even, even just walking about my day, and people go, how's it going? And I go, it's okay. How's the podcast? It, it's okay. And they go, what, what are you fucking talking about? You've got Dane Cook on your podcast today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. People will say that to me. You right. know, and, and it, 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 is, it is hard to... Um, I don't know why. I do have problems doing that. But do you think that maybe like those are things that you put up that you're like, no, I need to be that guy. I need to be the guy that works through the thing that I'm not so feeling so good about. What would happen if you walked out the door and were like, um, follow me today. I know where we're all going. Because I do. <laughs> I have other days where I walk out the door and I go, I don't even believe in God, but I hope he's there. Help! <laughs> it's just like, I, I, I try to now in my stand-up, the first things that I normally say when I go up on stage is an absolute truth. I open with an absolute truth. Eyes are the window, windows to the soul. 
it's putting something out in the in, in an energy in the audience where they like me or not they go but i believe them if yeah. they believe you then you can kind of take them anywhere what's an example of an absolute truth oh, like an opening yeah opening yeah um oof. i've had a lot of them i mean quite literally um I mean, not to keep it on the, the, the night my dad had passed away, I would happen to be in LA. Who went and I, first, your mom or dad? My mom passed of cancer. A week later, my dad sat me down and said, I have cancer. And then they were both gone within nine months of each other. Yeah. I'd like to think if I had more parents, they would have died as well in that same <laughs> time frame. dropping they're dropping like flies all of my 14 <laughs> parents but i had to go up on stage at that point and, and i think i just opened with that i told the audience and man was that like a some people didn't know what to do with that yeah you know but that's okay that's where i'm to begin that's what real oh i hate it's like art that's what real creativity i think it, the first time the paintbrush touches the canvas has to be with the emotion of like what am i really trying to put on there yeah and if it is just like just gonna do that first then that's what you'll get from your audience you. was it cathartic for you to talk about your brother-in-law and what happened with that well i mean i haven't really even talked about it except for like i think people know mm, people know flex of it but what i'm about to do in this next year and what i'm about to show people really went down i i think it's going to be the greatest thing that i've I've implemented into my repertoire of comedy. I'm going to tell the whole story. Can we move more things maybe, possibly? And <laughs> if we could get her a louder keyboard as well. The space button sounds like a, so well. The space button sounds like a fucking trampoline <laughs> over there. Just Are you writing an angry I quit letter? <laughs> she can't hear because she's wearing the headset, but it's like, da, 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 da. Are you doing Morris code? Is it Morris? <laughs> Morris invented Morse. it, right? Morris, Morris, same thing. It's a very loud keyboard. That's all I'm going to say. No, no, no. Don't be sorry. It's actually... She's going to Poland tonight. It's a, so she's trying to... She, this is what's going on, Dane. Dear Poland! <laughs> she, she, she asked for a week off to go, okay. to, to, go to Poland. Yeah. And I, I'm a nice guy. I said, yeah, of course, go. But she's trying to get as much work in as she can. Got so it. she can... Be in Poland and not feel guilty that she's not here. So she's she, normally she wouldn't be editing when, Wait, and, when and the what great you, Dane Cook is here. But no, 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 no. And, and 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 I'm just asking, why are you in this room right now? Why do you need to be here? <laughs> do you need to be here? Because I'm totally fine. I'm cool with you leaving. And I don't. And, I, and I'm not saying that in a way like I don't want you here. You seem like a really great person. I'm getting a good vibe from you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can watch this later. It's going to be uploaded. Yeah, she'll have to watch it and give notes. Anyway, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Would you like her to go? No. <laughs> no. But I, it, you know, my, my girlfriend says to me, my fiance now says to me all the time, she's like, you're, you're, it's wild the way you notice everything happening around you at all times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, it's yeah. just from stand-up. It's all the years of like, we're, we're trying to keep it together. And we hear the clinking of the glass and we know there's a pocket of people talking and that way just doesn't like us. And she's standing up straight instead of coming into the room more like, and you're, it's minority report. You've got screens and other edits and information <laughs> happening while you're just trying to keep everybody corralled for 15 more minutes. Yeah. How do you do stand up for eight hours at once? Not that, very well. <laughs> that, that's, you had the record for longest stand-up set, three hours and 15 no, minutes. No, no, it, it was only a Chappelle, Laugh Factory record. Chappelle, oh, a Laugh Factory record. Yeah. The, record nope. the record's like, in the UK, it's like 38 hours. Oh, like, really? Yeah, no, it was just a local record. Prior to set five hours, then I did like six, then Dave did six and a half, and then I came in like a month later and did seven or seven and a half hours. From what time to what time do you get there and how long do you go? Yeah, I got on stage at... Like 11 o'clock at night, and we all left together. 48 people of the 57 that started the night, we all left together in the morning and walked out the door and like, <laughs> and I took a picture with the whole crowd at the end. That's on so stage. cool. Yeah, and I said, I'm never doing this ever again. It was like, it was, it was not good. <laughs> it was not a good really? idea. But I did crowd work. Like, I did it in my act, and then two hours in, I'm like, I'm just going to get to know each and every person and make their life funny. Yeah. So that's really what I did just to fill the time for the rest of it. Fucking amazing. You must have felt funny the next day. You must have been like, fuck, I'm a stand -up. I was so ready for a vacay after you that. Were? I was like, I got to, no, I'm tapping out for a minute. I, I saw a really cool paparazzi video of you the other day. It was of so, me? yeah, it was so good. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're like coming out of the gym. Yeah. You got your bike 
and the guy the guy stops you oh he's like walking with me yeah and you go journey with me and you walked with him forever and i just thought to myself oh that that is it's so simple people can't handle paparazzi but that's how you do it i kept it like back in that year because i was a little bit older that was probably like four or five years ago and i was like just treat every moment because i get anxious still around people yeah i still come out of that spot and I feel like that same kind of, I still just deal with a lot of anxiety. Really? Yeah. I still, it's still there, man. If I let it get the best of me, then you know, Take I, medication. I can't breathe. No medication. no medication. I've never taken any meds, but like just know all the techniques and the, the way, you know, I did Al-Anon meetings when I was a kid with my mom and I learned all these things to do when you're like feeling like you're, you know, a fight or flight and like being painted into your own corner. Uh-huh. And I learned anytime I'm nervous in, I had a, I had a dinner the other night. I treated it the same way as the paparazzi. I had a, a charity dinner with a couple that, that bid to have dinner with me, but I didn't know them. So I just had to go and sit with two people that I didn't know. And I was really anxious about it. Yeah. And I just, whether it was the paparazzi or if I go in, like it's a rolling podcast or a rolling interview and I go into interview mode. And so when I say like journey with me, now it's like I have a little bit of control in the situation because yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I, the awkward silence for whatever is always what haunts me. Like, I'm, I'm not going to be interesting in that moment. I'm going to, I'm not, I don't know. I'm just not going to like. That's trained because you're yeah, trained yeah, to, yeah, from, yeah. from doing stand up that you can't, you have to fill those silences. You have to get laughs. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And you've done so much stand up. You've gotten so good at it. It must be hard yeah. to be a real person. Guys, today's podcast is brought to you by ShipStation. Guys, you have to go check out ShipStation. They're an incredible company, especially if you own a business and are shipping things. It's the holiday season coming up. ShipStation has got your back. Let me tell you why. Hold on a second. George Clooney is texting. He wants to do the podcast. N O too late. Sorry. I told him off. I have a schedule too. Guys, I don't mean to get preachy, but in life, it is so important to set yourself up for success. That's what I'm trying to do with this podcast. And that's what you can do with ShipStation. You own a small business, right? You want your shipping to go out on time. You want a good rate. Yes. You want everything all in one place organized so you have more time to be you right so you can have more quality in life well that's what ship station's gonna do that's why you need to upgrade to ship station today let me continue ship station sets you up for growth by directly integrating with every shopping cart and storefront so your products are easier to find easier to manage and easier to get in your customers hands guys it's the holiday season oh my god it's christmas what are we gonna do Don't wait until you're drowning in orders. Upgrade to ShipStation today. Whether you're starting small or scaling up, ShipStation makes ship happen. No more limiting your business to one store because ShipStation integrates with every platform. Etsy, Amazon, eBay, Shopify. ShipStation allows you to have everything in one place in one convenient dashboard. That's right. You're a little dog. Well, guess what? I'm here to help you out, all right? Because I root for the underdog, the little dog. Whatever. I root for all dogs. I, I love dogs. Don't ship a dog, though. Don't, don't ship a dog. Don't do that. ShipStation will not ship any dogs. I mean, maybe they will. I don't Will they? And guess what, guys? 98% of all companies who try ShipStation stay with ShipStation, all right? That's just like this podcast. 98% of the people who watch this podcast, well, our drop-off rate's probably pretty, pretty high, actually. So ShipStation's got us beat there, for sure. Go to ShipStation.com today and sign up with my promo code NASH for a free 60-day trial. Start today and get set up before the biggest shipping season of the year. That's two months free. Visit ShipStation.com, click the microphone at the top, and use my promo code NASH. What do you think of Gen Z and all that? I dig them. I like them. Yeah? You know, I think that they've like, I think that they've kind of been, um, it's almost like, I talk to a lot of them too because I'm so just in it with everybody yeah i talk to everybody like i have people of every age and demo and i'm an analytics person so i know everything about my fan base yeah because when people write me sometimes i'll just look at their page and i just look at their life for a second and they'll write me a thing and i click on their like i'm doing this all the time i love it Mm -hmm. and yeah you're very active on tiktok like you you'll you'll you're not above answering the simplest question, yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. awesome. No, it's like, and, and so where do I look at them? I look at them as like two generations have kind of like the pendulum swing has gone from uh, like uh, the, maybe like the grandparents or my parents, like they don't have all the they don't have all the 
ability and they're they're colder and because of the gen and so they came in being like super strict and super like not loving and sitting down with the men saying we can have feelings and then we went the other way everybody gets an award everybody's okay placate placate yeah. everybody feelings we're all the same right right now yeah. we're the same right now it's Gattaca like everybody's like we're all the same right now yeah and and so I feel Gattaca. like a little bit of uh, <laughs> I feel a little bit of sadness for them because They've seen all these different movies playing in front of them going like, okay, like how do I, what do I have to contribute to my community now? And yeah. I feel like I'm seeing more and more younger people, more and more entrepreneurial with the best factor of willing to listen, willing to listen, ah. willing to listen and willing to diversify their portfolio with people that aren't like them who have great ideas. And uh -huh. that's what I, I can see it, man. I, I see it. And I like it. I like the pods and the clicks more than ever of young people getting together. I have a lot of hope for the future because yeah. of that. Yeah. Have, have you ever thought about just doing motivational speaking? <laughs> uh, it's almost like if ever... I came up with an act with no punchlines that I was like, <laughs> all right, this is going to, this is going to tank tonight, but I think I have a couple of poignant things that I could throw in there at the end instead of, <laughs> Um, I, I love being able to share failure, uh, success. Um, I don't know when it happened or exactly how, maybe just years of great therapy, but just being able as a kid with a lot of, um, self-loathing and hiding and, you know, I had a bad Still in therapy now? Um, not right now actively, but I will. And I seek out different kinds and I'm like, now what I'm did you learn in therapy? Boundaries. You putting up boundaries for people? <laughs> boundaries. I, I let everybody in because the kid who never had a lot Fun. of love and Damn. inclusion, when I got famous, I was like, you're in, you're in, you're in, you're in, you're in. Everybody, come on in. You seem happy. You're smiling at me. That must mean you like me. So when I sat in my therapy one day and he was like, what are your boundaries? <laughs> and I was like, uh. I don't know. I don't eat food after midnight. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I don't, don't eat carbs after. He was like, no, like, and that's when I started to work on my own personal philosophy and the five boxes that you need to check if you want to, um, do you have any deep woods off? By the way, there's, <laughs> there's one horse fly. You see it? The mosquitoes are terrible in LA. I can actually LA. hear it, what it's saying. Um, Wait, what's going on? Everybody has bites on their ankles in LA, guys, because it's, um, um, anyway, oh, I had a I had a crazy moment in therapy. This was I was like, uh, I was going to get I was having a bad marriage, and I was seeing this woman for a while. She was great, really helping me through it. I showed up one day for therapy Thursday, three o'clock. She sits down and she looks at me. She doesn't come over and sit. You know, we sit like this. Yeah. She stays at her desk. She's just sitting there, and I was like, okay, we're gonna start. She goes, <clears throat> she was badass. She looked like um, Ileana Douglas. She goes, so, Jason, do you think you're strong enough to leave your wife? Like that. Wow. And I was like, because like, I wasn't saying it in therapy for months and months mm -hmm. and months. And then that was, that, was, that was like the impetus. Like it took somebody. That was a, a eureka moment. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of uh, bold because so normally therapists bold. aren't going to, they nothing. want you to figure it out and they want you to say yeah. it and you start to go like, wow, I'm paying a lot of money for what I probably could have done in the mirror. But yeah, she but, was just like, I, she had heard enough. Yeah. I guess I had another moment where I saw, wow. a, I saw a male therapist and I, my, he's like, I had my ex-wife came in with us for one of the sessions and she comes in and he just attacked her. He, what? he had just heard like, and he was like, he had a really whiny voice. He'd be like, he'd be like, you know, he doesn't want to necessarily hang out with your friends all the time. And it was awful. Wait a second, this was therapy? Yeah, it was therapy. <laughs> this is, are you sure it was therapy? Oh, I, I remember. I remember. And I put it in my, I have it in, I made, a, I made a movie and there's a scene where Paul Tompkins plays the therapist. And in the movie, it's a little different yeah. where she goes to the bathroom and he leans over and he goes, he goes, hey. I'm going to take care of this. <laughs> I heard something. Uh, there was a bunch of comedians in uh, back east, and they were all going to a therapist. And this therapist had worked with uh, several stand-ups for several years. Really? And then, and I'm at, like, peak power at this point. Like, it's, like, 05, 06, 07. And I met this therapist, and uh, I just I went to visit this therapist. I was like, wow, if he works with all these comedians, and he's 
such a prolific, you know, uh, comedy whisperer or whatever. Yeah. I was like, I want to go. And this guy sits across from me. And he goes, like, he goes, Dane Cook. Your name comes up a lot. In- <laughs> <laughs> This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp Therapy Online. BetterHelp's therapists are trained to help you learn the cause of complicated emotions and give you coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour to the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people to licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, 100% online. You don't even have to leave your house. I loved going to therapy, guys. It taught me coping skills, self-empowerment. It helped me deal with trauma. And going to a therapist weekly and talking to someone, someone that keeps you uh keeps all your problems in check someone that circles back and says how's this going how's that going someone that you can ask really simple things to and how to deal with things that's what better help's going to do for you um and i just love this company so much i highly recommend it if you're thinking of trying therapy start with better help you can do it from your home you can cancel at any time you can also pick your therapist it's it's really wonderful. Guys, everyone deserves to feel their best and BetterHelp will get you started. Guys, BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service. They've matched millions of people with licensed and vetted therapists so you know you can feel good about signing up. Get all the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. Guys, all you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist, and if that therapist, if you're not clicking with that therapist, no problem, you can easily sign Sign up for a new therapist just like that. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month when you go to betterhelp.com slash all good things. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash all good things. Who who did you meet that taught you something incredible? Anybody? Betty White. I did a TV series with Betty White and Marie Osmond for a year. Are you serious? Yeah. Tell me what Betty White told you. Betty White taught me a lot. I mean, Betty White. (laughs) So she played my grandmother. Sorry, I'm sorry. It's just so funny. Dude, it's 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 like it's Betty White. It's It's Golden Girls Betty White. Like, and I'm on a TV show, randomly cast. They saw me at the San Fran Comedy Contest. I was up there with Stanhope, and we were vying for the number one position. And I happened to got a producer who came up and was like, hey, we're doing a TV show in Hollywood. Yeah. Have you been there? I'm like, no. Yeah. Go, you come down and take a meeting. Next thing you know, I'm at the Disney lot um, and going to the Laugh Factory for the very first time and thinking, I'm going to go. This is probably not going to work. And I'm not an L.A. comic, and I'm probably just going to go back to New York and try to figure out what's next. And instead, uh, they gave me the gig. They were like, <laughs> have you done television? I said, no, but I've done like stage. So if you need me to come in like that, <laughs> if you need me to come in and snap, <laughs> yes. fucking look, you know, yeah, yeah. put on a bedazzle. It's not West Side Story. Yeah, I was ready to do like, you know, uh, summer stock. Yeah. But they were like, you know, they worked with me a little bit, even in the first meeting, and they, and they were like, we're going we're gonna to give you a shot at this. We need energy on the show. It's like a, it's a Saturday night, 8.30 show. Nobody's watching it. Yeah. But Betty White's going to be my grandmother and Marie Osmond is my big part is my mom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I was like the fourth lead. Yeah. Craig Ferguson was actually on it before he was a, even oh, wow. known. Uh, you know, so it was like, it was like Betty, Marie, Craig and myself or whatever, like third or fourth lead. Yeah, they're trying to get a, some of that golden girls juice back. They, it was very different though. It oh, wasn't, it was. no, she, they, this was more like coffee shop marie osmond was still very just like yeah. it was just very wholesome that's what a wholesome, wholesome. entertainment yeah, yeah, yeah. um and so there i was Fuck, day to day working with betty she'd drive onto uh the i remember i'd see her drive into the trailer area in her little yellow buick she, always she drove, drove a buick yeah she always drove that's, herself to set that's an old and, lady car yeah, man, yeah like a bright yellow like yeah. bees would follow this car it was so yellow yeah uh and every single day i would take as much time with her as I could because it was like not only are you Betty White from Golden Girls and you're one of the funniest people to ever be in situational television but like you're one of the most entrepreneurial you are Hollywood you know people don't even know the amount of like production and she was just like a maven she was a maven she produced produced so many things a man she had like she had like the run that any of us would like dream of having. Wow. And so every single day I got to, 
ask her about old Hollywood and new Hollywood and, and even just like things about acting. One day she came to me and I was doing a scene and I remember I was like, take the coffee mug and come in and I'm supposed to, I had a big mullet at the time, like hockey player mullet and yeah. I come in and I was like, you know, I'm feeling, and I did this thing and she was like, oh honey, honey, come here for a second. Yeah, yeah. Leans in, she grabs me and she goes, you're indicating. And I was like, what does that even mean? She's like, indicating? You don't know indicating? I was like, no. And she's like, okay. And then she would teach me do the maneuver, but don't plan that so way. No, cool. like the blocking is not shit like that. And dude, I was just like, every single time she hugged me at the end of like a rehearsal, it was the greatest yeah. hug ever. Yeah. It was just, and, and so I learned so much in that show. She's helping you become better. Yeah. And, and, and also she had a savage sense of humor. She could say like real funny shit. Like I remember at a table read once where this, <laughs> Where the script wasn't so good and she goes like this and the writers were laughing at like what we were saying and she with her betty white smile she leaned and she goes when the writers are laughing like this we're screwed <laughs> <laughs> it's like, are we? and she probably used another word um but that experience landed me in la gave me enough money to to live here for a minute i was living near barney's beanery in some like shitty little apartment yeah and um and, and her her belief and her um, enthusiasm for me when I was like, I don't know if I belong here or should stay out here. It, when you made it, did, she, did you talk to her again? I, I talked to her for years, and then we kind of lost touch. But Did she ever get to say, Dane, you, you played Madison Square Garden or anything like that? Nothing or, like that, but no. she was just so happy that, you know, like just happy yeah. I was happy. It was almost like, I don't care about the venue or the gigs. Are you happy? Yeah. Are you happy today? And that's kind of like. And she, and she kept doing it. She kept. Playing that yeah. role into her 90s? Dude, she did Proposal with Ryan Reynolds and everybody was hilarious. And then she ended up on a Valerie Bertinelli, like hot in Cleveland. And she, so, was, so she was very funny. Get on, get on that for a second. Imagine when you're 90. She lived to 99? What yeah. It, yeah. Okay, so yeah. Uh, imagine Dane Cook at, in, in his 90s. And, you know, you can take care of yourself. You'll probably get there. You don't drink, whatever. Would you... Do you want to jump in a Ryan Reynolds movie in your nineties? Like I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand that. Yeah, I want to do this. I want to entertain people. Yeah, that's my sole purpose. I feel like that's is awesome. to just be a transmitter of yeah. emotion. And if that's funny, great. And if that's something else, if it's something that doesn't necessarily play to my strength as a comedian, as long as I'm transmitting something with heart and humor, I kind of feel like that's my jam for the rest of my life. Do you? Think but I met. I'll tell you this, Jerry Lewis. I was buddies with Jerry all the way up until really. He, Oh, I was like, what? Oh man, like Jerry was like, uh, you know, he, he called me his son. I mean, I was really close to Jerry. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jerry, how that Jerry, how did that happen? It's crazy. So God. I went and saw. Um, life is insane. I went and saw his documentary. I got invited at one of the lowest moments of my life. I got an invite to Paramount Lot to see um, uh, Method to the Madness, his documentary about his life. And I was such a fan, but I was in a I was in a hole. I was really in really bad, rough shape, a rut. Why were you in a rut? Um, it was really right around the time when I. It was almost like everything. My parents and I didn't grieve, and then my uh. brother and I didn't, and I just you know charged ahead, and then all the stuff in comedy, and I'd come off of the big, very first big, my career. Everything was settling, and I did not have any idea how to like really. Um, converse my feelings at that time it's like yeah. pre-therapy it's like right in that pocket where it's like i just didn't know where i was anymore i didn't know really where, i didn't even know who i was looking at in the mirror because i was like i'm only a comedian that's like mm -hmm. that should be the thing i am after all the things you know about yourself and i really didn't know like emotionally how to cope yeah. so i go to this thing and i'm in the fifth row of my good friend richard my, my, call him my brother. He's my real brother. He's the brother I should have had. My friend Richard to this day. Yeah. Uh, my first neighbor who, like, he's the best. Awesome. So I go, Richard, will you go to this thing with me? It's Jerry Lewis. And he's like, oh, he has a very distinct voice. He goes, D, I'll go with you. <laughs> Randy goes, D, Jerry. And I'm sitting next to Richard. And we watch this incredible documentary. And Jerry Lewis gets up to the podium at the end. And it's a few thousand people at that theater at the Paramount. And he goes just like this. He gets up there. And you know, like Jerry had like a surly way about him. He always yeah. kind of had like a yeah, he's pissed off. You know, yeah, yeah, like there was something yeah. in his tooth, and he was annoyed yeah. he couldn't get it before he spoke. Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where's <laughs> Dane Cook? Oh. That's the 
first thing, not hi, welcome to the event, evening. Oh, boy. And I'm like, oh, shit. I turn to Richard, and we look at each other, and then he goes, I want to know where Dane Cook is. <laughs> it's such a good impression. I got to tell you, man, of all the things in my life that made me feel like my head was going to explode, that's, like, up there. Because yeah. that voice was saying my name. Yes, the telethon voice that you would watch every Labor Day. Like, I'm shaking, yeah. and I didn't know what to do. Yes. And I went, and I'm usually cool in the pocket, yep. but I was not cool in the pocket here. Yeah. I, I went like this. I went, um, I, I kind of have I went, and I went like this. I go, I go, I go Jerry. Like, like the lamest. I, I don't stand, the seat kind of comes up, so now I sit back on the top, and I kind of like, don't know how, and I, I'm doing, and then he goes, he goes, um, you being here means the world to me. Oh my God. We love you in my home. And I went, like, and I went, I didn't know what to say. I went, I go, I go, um, <laughs> I go, Jerry, I love you. And I said, Jerry, I love you. That's cool. I just said, Jerry, I love you. He goes, I want to talk to you after. Anyway, pulls yeah. me aside at the end of his podium moment. Yeah. He ignores everybody. I mean, we're talking like big A-list people are there. Sure. I won't name, name names, but like you couldn't believe the people that were waiting for him and finally left. Yeah. He grabbed me like this and he pulled me in. Yeah. And he started talking about my performance at Madison Square Garden like a, like he saw everything that was happening in my mind and in my body with the precision and the mechanics that only somebody of his caliber would know. Wow, that's like, fucking cool. It was like Yoda. What you did with the, and he was telling me things that I'm like, I'm freaking out. And he kept his hand there and we were talking and people were taking, Richard, my friend, took about a thousand pictures of me holding court. And he takes my phone number and every Sunday we talked for years and I'd go to Vegas and I'd see yeah. him and hang out with him and his yeah. birthdays or whatever it was. But the, the whole point of this story, when you said, like, would I be doing this at whatever, I would see Jerry live. He would still tour mm -hmm. and um, fill theaters. Yeah. And he would always do 35 minutes of his gig uh, with the screens and the typewriter bit and all that. And then he'd do, like, 20 minutes of Q&A. And that's where the show was. Because anybody could ask him a question, and you didn't know what the fuck this man was going to say and he didn't care what any there was no pr there was nobody no. it was one woman it was jerry i just have to say i saw your film and i believe it was called the beach house and what that film did to me and how that film affected me i just had to say to this day jerry thank you cut to jerry he goes that film sucked, and I sucked in it. <laughs> You're like, what? One night, one night he's, he's 10 minutes into the Q&A, yeah. and somebody comes out and takes him off stage. It's the show short. And th this tells me like what my road ahead will be, and probably for every comic and any young comic that's checking this out listening is like, I go backstage, Danielle, his uh, daughter, who I'm good friends with, says, my dad wants to see, he's over in the corner, nobody's allowed near him. And I go over, <laughs> and he looks pissed. <laughs> and I go, hey man, is everything all right? And he's 90, I think, at the 89 or 90. And he goes, they lit me 15 minutes early. I had 15 <laughs> more minutes of Q&A. I was like, Jerry, I don't know if you know this, you ruled the world. <laughs> yeah. For fucking ten straight years, and then everything after, and you're, yeah. you're like, still a tiger. That's us. That's me. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, gonna yeah, be yeah. like ninety. Going, I could have done better. I, there's more in me, and they pulled the plug early. And I think that's. Do you like that part of yourself? I'm totally into that. I'm fine with that. You I are. love. I love disruption. I love disrupting, even in this industry, with the way I'm rolling this out. And above it all, self financing it. I'm, and I'm, I'm probably pissing off a lot of people in a lot of corporate places that don't like that I'm changing the rules again, the mm -hmm. way that, you know, IP and legalese. Your special which, is is on danecook.com right now, right? Well, right now I'm partnered with Moment. Okay. Moment, they, they, Andrew the, Schultz the, the just PR did people told me to say danecook.com. Yeah. Uh, 
Oh, oh, that's because, wait, this is probably air. Because I think it's going to go off of Moment soon. Right. But we love Moment House. Okay. Yeah. We, I love the guys at Moment House. I, they're building me a world. Bart and everybody over there, awesome. Bart is amazing. Yeah, Good great, people, great people. Great um, people. Great people. Big future. Um, DaneCook.com. Yeah, the whole, the, whole, <laughs> the whole idea was to own IP and to be able to clock it in real time. And you don't get own it. your specials? I do. Oh, wait. Oh, the old uh, ones? I own... I own uh, like seven of ten of my catalog. That's good. Yeah, That's and a couple really of things. And a couple of things I'm trying to get get back. And I've got a couple of nice, uh, a can nifty little breach of contract things happening in the in the world, but. That's for another day. Can I go to your website and buy your specials? Sure. Oh, that's yeah. fucking Well, right cool. now, it's just going to be above it all. Right. And then over the holidays, I'm going to start putting some more. We're doing a, a recut of uh, Madison Square Garden. Um, I own that. Oh. I own Troublemaker. I own a, a lot of stuff that I know people want. Yeah. But I'm going to, we're colorizing it and making it 4K ready. And we're just You know gonna, what I loved was Torgasm. Oh, really? I fucking love, I think, I think because it was on the same night as Entourage. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so I, th I think it was on after Entourage, mm -hmm. and I was like, fuck, this is, I, I, I liked it better than Entourage most nights. Yeah, you know. That it was came, fun. It was really well done. It came together really weird. I was in the office with Chris Albrecht one day, the yeah. president of HBO at the time, and he goes, what are you up to, because uh, we were planning the special, yeah. but he goes, what are you up to now? And I go, oh, I have about 400 hours of <laughs> road gig footage. In that bag. And I'm going to go cut webisodes. For, <laughs> yeah. To try to build up some interest for this uh, HBO special. And he goes, oh, pop one in. <laughs> I took any video and I put it in. It was like Gary Goldman in an argument and upset about something. Gary Goldman. And um, whatever it was, it was like, it was just Love Gary banter Goldman. and funny and like Gary yeah. being funny because he was like on this, just hilarious and real. And he goes, how, how much footage do you have? And I was like, like 400 hours. We, I filmed a month. Yeah. I said, but I did film Penn State where it was supposed to be 5,000 people and 12,500 people showed up and they literally moved me to the field house. Sick. And he goes, let's see that. I popped in that DVD and he goes, um, I'll buy this. <laughs> I was awesome. like, what? And he goes, I'm going to buy this. He goes, take this 400 hours and cut episodes together any way you can. We'll put eight of them on and it'll lead up to Vicious Circle. That way American can really get to know you Smart. better. Smart guy. Oh, what a fucking Albrecht. gent. Put me on the map. Well, him and Marty Collender put me on the map. I, I, I don't know. I, I put myself on the comedy map, and those guys made me look beautiful and in, in, in such a different dynamic way yeah. because of the way that they filmed that based on my my ideas. So, um, so, so very fortunate. So, and I have to ask you the the whole uh, half brother thing, the embezzlement. Yeah, that's just. Unreal. Yeah, it's it, tough. You, I can't really talk too much okay, about it, only to. because now I'm signed on to this. You know, we're 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 doing we're doc. doing something. We're doing a doc. Right. Have you healed from that? Yeah, you have. Yeah, no. I would even go so far as to say, I'm glad it happened because yeah. I wouldn't be who I am today if that veil wasn't kind of removed. I didn't know how. Um, I didn't know how much toxicity was around me until he was gone. I had a I had an ex girlfriend like that, who was. We should get them together. <laughs> Guys, today's podcast is also brought to you by Every Plate. You know, fall is upon us. It's October, and let me tell you something. I'm a busy guy. I am really busy. I got. I hated the way I said guy there. I'm a busy guy. But let me tell you something. I am very busy. I got the kids. I got uh, my 13 year old. I got my 16 year old. Everybody's coming in at different times. Wyatt does cross country now. He'll come in from cross country and he's like, I'm starving. I have a meal ready for him. I pop it in the microwave or I even cook it up on the stove. I heat it up. It's delicious. It's healthy. It keeps me on my diet. That's what I love about every plate. Guys, you have to try every plate. If you think meal kits are too expensive, think again. Every plate is actually 25% cheaper than going to the grocery store. Guys, with prices going up every day, I can count on every every plate to bring me value and to bring me fresh tasting food. And guys, you can change things up every week. Choose from 21 different recipes. And within those 21 different recipes, you can pick different proteins. Guys, don't turn to takeout when things get hectic. Every plate is actually 58% cheaper than going to takeout. Never mind if you have a delivery service, okay? Let's just say straight takeout. It's 58% cheaper to order every plate and the food is always fresh and it's gonna taste better and it's gonna be better for you. Make a change in your life. You know, recently I, I lost a lot of weight and that's because I've been eating right and that's because of every plate. Get everything you need for the week delivered all at once. Try the vanilla cheesecake. It's wonderful. Try the sweet kale salad. Try the protein bundles. Get your first box of every plate for just a dollar 
$1.49 per meal by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NASH149. Get your first box of every plate for just $1.49, guys, by going to everyplate.com and entering the code NASH149. There's clarity in the chaos. And anybody out there who's truly in a chaotic moment or a capsized traumatic moment, that's exactly what you need to emerge. But when you're in the chaos, there is no clarity. No, because you might be dealing with ailments or you might be dealing with, um, you know, uh, disease or things that you're imbibing. And there could be a, a myriad of things that are keeping you obviously distracted. But the real reality is when you're ready to heal from it, don't, you don't run from it. You don't go like, I'm glad that's behind me. You study it. You, 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 if you can intercept it even while it's happening to go like, I'm a firm believer mm. that the obstacles in front of us in life, the things that really make us go, why, why, man? I'm more than this. Why is this here? That they didn't come to you. You walked into them. I believe that you want those hurdles and obstacles because for whatever reason, the way we're wired as humans, I think we want that challenge to go, can I be better? And only I know it. Yeah. That's not for you to tell me if I'm better, but I'll tell you I'm better. Damn. That's those obstacles and those hurdles. If you spend your life figuring out crafty ways to get around them, you're not going to be as whole as you think you are. Like, ah, ha ha, I dodged that bullet. You want to take that bullet. Oh man, you want to do fuck, Mary kill or what? <laughs> are we in <laughs> no i only said that because that's fucking that's fucking deep man you're blowing me away this is really 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 fucking cool uh, what are we doing 116 okay you gotta go no you good okay dude i'm totally I, i'm this was i wrapped up my day with you as a fan because i was like i don't want to feel like we're rushing i just want to like get to some interesting shit what do you so you never told me about your day I want to know what you do when you, when you wake up. Yeah, so I get up in the morning because Kelsey gets up early because she's up. She does Pilates, she's certified Pilates instructor. Sometimes I'll go. Really? You're that guy? Cell phones to stun. <laughs> Who is it? It's Todd. <laughs> Can I talk to him? Which Todd? There's a lot of Todd. Oh, he'll fucking flip. Todd Phillips? All right. Todd Bridges? <laughs> Todd Bridges. Who? Mike Who? Oh, really? Oh, wow. No, I don't want Dane talking to Mike. <laughs> <laughs> it won't be good. All right, the day, ready? Um, well, I'm in the office pretty much right away. Um, and then I jump in around 1030. If I don't do Pilates, I, I swim. Pilates? Yeah, I do Look Pilates. He did Pilates. Ooh. It's like, like a nine, hot yoga 98 kind of degrees. Yeah, but let me tell you something. Yeah, it's yeah. athletic Pilates, Kelsey yeah. teaches. It's not positions and stuff. It's like... Go, 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 go. It's yeah. wild. And it's my favorite thing ever. Um, unless I'm swimming. I swim every day. I probably swam for the last... I, I definitely haven't Indoor missed a swim in six swim. weeks. I have a pool outside. I have mm -hmm. a tether. And then I have a soft belt. And I stay in one place. And I just wear goggles. And I just... And so I'm not doing laps. I'm just thinking. Oh, fuck that. I can't I do that. I can't... I, I, I would need to sit, have some movement. Go back and oh, no. forth. I you sit it. in one place and go like this? Yeah. Oh, it's like, it's like meditation and, and workout. Right on. And you're breathing. And then you get the shimmer off the bottom of the pool. So everything feels like it's like, like you're in a treasure trove with your ideas. Yeah. And I work out a lot of things in there. Um, get out of the pool. Get back in the office. Obviously, like all the mundane stuff and emails. And like, especially now, like maybe a Zoom podcast or coming down and seeing somebody like yourself you know, uh, XM radio tour, do a bunch of stuff. Um, always try to carve out some time to hang with my dogs. I love hanging with my what pups. What kind of dogs you got? I got a shepherd poodle mix. He's seven chopper. And then we just got Kelsey and I got, well, not just, but a year and a half ago, a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Oh yeah. And she is Sick. the best. She's like daddy's little girl. I love her. So play with the dogs, hang out with the pups. And then before stand up, it's usually a couple of different things. It's like, um, I mentor a lot. Do you? I, yeah, yeah. And so I try to like carve out the la the final hour or two of my day to just um, be of service That's to somebody and try to give back. Amazing. And try where, to where do you, who do you mentor? Lots of people. Yeah. People that I know well. Some people that have just reached out and wrote me a beautiful flowery letter and shared something. I'll say, give me your number. I, I I'll talk to strangers. I'll, are, are you religious? 
more so than I was some years ago. I grew up Catholic. Yeah. Then I dipped out for a while. Yeah. <laughs> was like, I like you, but I want to see other religions. Um, and, and, and really became more of a person that was, uh, I'm very spiritual. Yeah. And I believe a lot in like uh, karma and energies. Uh-huh. And um, you believe in astrology? A, mm, a very a little bit. I don't. I wouldn't like say that that's like my main resource. But then I've kind of gotten a relationship over the last few years with what I believe to be a higher power, yeah. but also encompassing the idea that like we're just we're here to be of service in some way, whether that's my comedy or sharing something that might be like, you know. Uh, you know, I went through cancer with my folks. I can talk to people now and I understand that journey. So when yeah. people reach out and they say I'm dealing with A, B, or C, sometimes I hit people up and I say, I think I can, I think I can give you a little bit of, you know, um, perspective on that. So yeah. I you, love it. Do you find that believing in spirituality is tough because you're a comedian and it's like your job to call bullshit on everything? I like that you put it like that because that might be very well why I tapped out uh, at you know, some time back, I found that as, a, as, a, as a, trying to be funny and trying to, <sighs> boy, you get to a point where you're just like, I got to believe in something, you yeah. know. Uh, but do you, do you find that? Oh, man, I sometimes just get this is an overwhelming conversation. I wish I could say this is like bread and butter and easy to talk about. Yeah, this this is like to, this is like a, a talking shop comedy conversation when we start talking about this stuff because. It makes my brain go into a lot of what ifs in different places. Yeah. I just know I feel something is beyond me. Yeah. And I sometimes feel, you know, uh, weak and still so small when thinking about that. Yeah. And the idea of like, what is next? What, how do we level up? What's the next, you yeah. know, stage? Um, but then some other times, I guess I feel like I'm closer than ever to really having that understanding. Yes. I can't always articulate it, but I, I think I feel more present right now in my life and feel more of a presence around me. I'll say yeah. that. My, my, my girlfriend came to me one night when we first started dating, and she just goes, baby, you're not going to fucking believe this. I go, what, 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 what? She goes, we're, you know, obviously, you know we're both Gemini. And I go, yeah, 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 yeah. She goes, she goes I got uh, your, your, your time of birth from your mom. Oh, wow. She goes, <laughs> she goes, we're absolutely perfect for each other. <laughs> and, and, and I, based on your time of birth? Yeah, based on my time of birth. <laughs> and, and of course, I'm in love with her, so I'm like, I'm like, no way. I'm like, fuck yeah. I'm like, are you kidding? You're kidding. She's like, yeah. She's like, you know, like, you're busy. I'm busy, but it's all, it's all going to work. It's, you know, so, so I, you know, I'm all happy. And then I leave there and I tell my friends this. Yeah. And they're like, what? Like, are you on fucking crack? Like, what are you saying? And I was like, no, no, no. Like, we're going to be, we're, we're both Gemini. And, she yeah. was born at 1.42 a.m. and I was born at 1.42. <laughs> and you sound like a fucking lunatic. <laughs> what if you find you, it? What you if you want to believe it, that? but you want to believe it. You want to believe it because you want to be like, oh, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. You know? Oh, man. <laughs> is, is, I feel like everything is always ever-changing and like so much feels, I don't know, man. It's almost like I'm okay with the idea of not holding on to things mm. because I've had things that I held on to that went away. Obviously stuff with my brother or with my family or like, I think the lesson I'm still learning or in, even with Kelsey, it's like, I didn't know if that relationship would work. A lot of people obviously didn't think it would work. And we heard from people, you know, yep. external, but the reality was I was like, let me just see if I give somebody absolute love for a couple of years of my life, just everything I am, the very true, the loyalty, everything I really am. Yeah. Like, where does that, where does that take you? Yes, yes. And, that, that's and, and it's okay if it ends. It's okay if it yep. goes away. A hundred percent. And I, I don't live my life um, expecting or holding on to something except for the things that I expect of myself and, and that self-competitiveness to go, can I exceed my own expectations in whatever it is that I'm, whatever dilemma or anticipation that I'm putting myself in. Yeah, I, 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 I raised my voice once with her and I was like, She's like, you raised your voice. And I was like, oh, did I? And, and never again. And I would never do that again. But in, when I was married, I, I, we would argue all the time. Right. You know what I mean? So yeah. trying to do everything right uh, at, at this point in your life when I am so much wiser and I should know better. Right. Right. But still, you know, we are human. And so there's always going to be those moments where we fuck up. And then that's part of the whole journey, too. 
yeah. learning from a place where I was like, that was not my best. And then investigating it to yeah. be like, I, I feel it's kind of frustrating sometimes when we're in this era that where somebody gets canceled or they fuck up really bad. And then it's like, it's almost like your story's over. You're done. We have voted. And we've decided, even though we don't know you, we have no idea if you have true malice. We, 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 we're not going to do diligence. We just feel like you suck and you're done. And you go, what about the part of the journey where you fail so epically that you learn something exceptional and then you bring that back to the table? Yeah, what yeah, yeah. are we doing to people yeah. by ostracizing them to the point where they can't even go, but I did actually learn something, and do you want to hear what it is? Because it might help everybody. Yeah. What are we doing, dude? Yeah. Like, where are we the at? Other day, it's such a strange time the other day, that we're in. The other day I was with my friend. I just want to stay above it all. <laughs> Daycook.com. See, see what I just did? We'll be right back. <laughs> we'll be right back. I, I was with my friends the other day, and someone said, oh, they, they have cancer. And, the, and my other friend heard canceled. They have canceled? Yeah. And he goes, oh, they got canceled? And they go, no, he has cancer. Like that. Like, they're like, oh, like, that's better. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather have cancer than be canceled. <laughs> you know what the worst is? That canceled what? cancer that people have been getting. <laughs> Where you get the cancer, and then Twitter decides you should die sooner. <laughs> that's fucking good. All right, let's play some games. Let's go. I think we're ready. Let's go. Are we doing this? Never have I ever been employee of the month. Never have I ever been employee of the month. I have. Doing what? Oh, the movie. Well, in the movie, <laughs> and I worked at a video store, and one time I was employee of the month. You worked at a video store? Yeah, we had like a little porn section in the back I would think with you... like those saloon doors, and I would go in there every <laughs> once in a while, and I would put them alphabetic, and they were like, dude, you win. You're employee of the month. I had anal, obviously. That was on shelf number one. And then B was bestiality, and then C was cunnilingus, and then D was dick and ass, and then E was... Um, Do the whole alphabet. I fucking love it. <laughs> Everybody in. <laughs> and um, C was zebras D, sucking each other's dicks. D was dick on dick crime. <laughs> <laughs> F was fuck fest. <laughs> G was gag. Gag a lot. Sir gag a lot. H was Harry Hall's Adventures. Of course. I was, uh, I can't believe what I just swallowed. <laughs> J was uh, the joy of sex. <laughs> <laughs> K was um, cunts, cunts, cunts. Um, I love L. cunts, cunts, cunts. One of my favorites. Cunts, cunts, cunts 2 was even, because it was a prequel, and it was an origin story of cunts, cunts, cunts. Yeah, 2 is great. Different yeah. director than yeah. cunts, cunts, cunts 1. Wonderful. Use all of this. <laughs> I, oh, I will. Okay. <laughs> Fucking A. Stop. I know Dane Cook is here. I don't know. Silencia. To, I'm 50. I don't know how to do that. Wait, you're 50? Yeah. And I'm 50. I'm 49. But I know you're 50. But I say 50 because it's here, man. All right. There's no denying it. Yeah, love it. Have you accepted it? I love it. Yeah, you're, you're, you're doing good. I feel good. I love it. I'm so happy. It's important to take care of yourself, huh? The best. Yeah, you have yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. You get massages? No. No. Not really. Don't like people touching I'm you. limber already. <laughs> What's your, what's your, um, is this an, is this one of the questions no, for the, oh, no. what's Dane, what's Dane Cook pampered? Like what would, if you were to pamper yourself? Pampered? Yeah. Yeah. What would you do? Uh, my golf is, uh, video games. I'm a big first oh. person shooter. I like, uh, Warzone. A little bit. I'll Dude, jump on other you people. you should stream. What, should I really? Yeah. Like Twitch or you whatever. You kill it on Twitch. I got friends who stream and they're like, my last three albums, I haven't made as much money as I make when I'm streaming on Twitch or YouTube or whatever. So I think it's pretty lucrative, but I really love it. No, like, but you're, I'm a you're, gamer. Your, your personality will fucking kill it on there. Like you'll just be doing a set. Oh, you heard it here, game. folks. Okay. Dane Cook Gaming. Guys, special thanks to Happy Face for having us in their studio today. Go to happyface.com and check out some of their CBD products today. I love the Vitality gummies, and I also love the CBD nighttime gummies. Let me tell you something. They put you right to sleep, and they're fantastic. So go check out some of their products today. Uh, Scott Sire is an owner in the company, good friend of mine, and uh, go check out some of their stuff. Okay, thanks. Never have ever had a near-death experience. A near death experience. I mean, I've been near death. <laughs> so, I mean, I have been ar around some pretty gnarly, harrowing things. But me, myself, luckily, I'm. When I'm were you near death? I'm. Oh, man. 
it's it's a lot. I don't know if I can go there, but e- let's just say like even with just my parents and like being there with yeah. them and like you know, loving them to the entry point of it's time for them to go. You know, being with both of them. The stories that I have around those last few days with my mom and dad are like the most prolific, beautiful, funny, sad. It's everything. It's everything in those moments. Um, so, yeah, I have been near death. You're lucky you were there. You were able to be there. I was really fortunate. And the story of my with my mom was the wildest. I'll tell you this real quick. My mom knew I wanted to be on HBO when I was a kid because that was like the spot, right? Growing yes, up, it was, it was. like, yeah, all was the like good stand-ups were on like for HBO. For me, Carl, even Carlin. Rock, but Carlin was my guy. Yeah. And I told my mom, I said, Mom, if you believe in me and you support me, I'm going to get, I'm going to take this all the way. I'll be on HBO someday. And she's like, I believe in you, I believe in you. And, and she did. She was, I, her nickname was The Compass because she knew the direction of my life before I even believed I had anything to, to, to give and to share. So... She was on her last couple of days, and I had a trip planned that I was going to cancel, and she was like, I want you to take the trip. And it was so my mom to not want me around during something that was really, really terrible, and she wanted my sister Courtney there because she could handle things differently from me, and it was like she knew she was going to pass. So I go, and I'm on this trip, and Courtney calls me and says, you know, but I spent like three or four days with my mom straight, like, Amazing, yeah. beautiful conversations. Just everything you'd want a life to be with your mom, I had. And so Courtney calls me and she's like, mom, um, you know, passed away. And um, she said what happened in her last few moments was like, like, uh, can't believe it. Almost can't wrap my brain around it. She said she was having trouble breathing. And um, Courtney said, uh, I said, mom, do you want, she helped her sit up and said, do you want me to put on the TV? And she, she nodded. And she goes, and when I turned on the TV, Vicious Circle was on HBO. And her eyes opened up, and she whispered, that's my boy. And then told Courtney she loved her. Oh, man. And passed away. No way. Yeah. No fucking way. Yeah, man. The last thing that she saw was me, like, fulfilling that dream as this scared kid that didn't believe in myself. And she was really the only person who ever truly believed in me in that moment. Like hours of rubbing my back and saying, you're a good person. You're a good person. Don't let those, don't, you know, and just encouraging and championing and encouraging and championing. And Courtney says, I could not believe it. It was beautiful. It was such a beautiful, beautiful thing. And I'm so glad that Courtney was there. I'm so glad she was with my mom. Yeah, Dane, that's, that is such a fucking good story. My dad, my dad had a stroke six weeks before he passed, and all he could say was "cool" or "school." It was one of those strokes that, like, all, it, it, lo- it locked in type thing. And so, when I would try to talk to him, he'd be like, "School, school, 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 school," and he was trying to say, "Like, did you go get the car?" And you know, but yeah, school, 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 school. And I was like trying to have conversations with him, and for six weeks we were trying to get him to talk, and he just couldn't talk. School, 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 cool, 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 and then finally I. I had to go back to Vancouver to shoot Good Luck Chuck, and I put on my jacket, and I'm there with my dad. And again, same thing with my dad. Beautiful, beautiful last few days, and like everything. Just everything was okay, right in that, like not buttoned up okay, but like forgiving and loving and understanding and everything you'd want, father, son. Gave him a hug, put on my jacket. And he's like, school, 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 meaning like you got to go back to work. And I said, yep, you know, Dad, I, I'm going to go up. I go, I'm going to fly up one more day of shooting. I'm going to come back. School, 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 school. I get up. I walk to the door. And Courtney goes, your son is leaving. What's his name? And my dad pointed at me with his good arm, and he goes, Dane. Oh, wow. And that's the last thing I heard my dad say. Damn. Jess, I can't believe you walked through his fucking story about his dying mother. <laughs> do you have to leave? Go ahead. Go, 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 go. Goodbye. Walk out the door. Walk out the door. Okay, okay. we're going gonna... to... Obviously not a fan of my mom. <laughs> Bye, Jess. Have fun in Poland. Take care. Nice meeting you. That's Jess, guys. That's the last you'll be seeing of her. <laughs> <laughs> she did the best she could. Okay. All right, this will be the last thing we'll do, and then I'll let no you No worries, no worries.
Dude, this has been so fucking What fun. a great chat, man. Oh, my goodness. This is the stuff I love, dude. Well, I it, love it. Okay, I just, Heart and humor, comedy, fucking, real it, shit. It made me cry, Like, man. people, and can I, can I say something maybe even off the record? I don't care. You can use it. You know, these clips have been going around of, like, whether it's the Burt one or just stuff that's, like, not comedy related or even a piece of the material where I talk about, like, the worst, most humiliating hell gig yeah. and how it's, how it's like, um, helping people. Yeah. How people are hitting me up saying, man, you made me laugh, but like you made me believe that I can mm, push through something. And I'm like, that's all I want to be. It's the fucking best. Fucking best. It's the fucking best. It's when you can help somebody when somebody comes up and says, it's, it's so dumb. It's, a, it's it, so for me, it's, it's a, gratitude. It's a, it's a, it's a gratitude. YouTube video. Somebody will say, yeah. oh, I, I, I watched your videos while well, my <sighs> fucking mother died. And, or I, you know, or, yeah, it's the best. It's feeling. those little things sometimes that you know you provide that somebody just needs to get them to. The, and by the way, I need those same things. So sometimes you don't even realize like I'm watching your stuff or we're watching in like we're doing it for each other. Yes, so you, yes. you get to say to somebody, thank you. I'm glad I could be there for you because and then I always want to go because somebody just did that for me lately. And yeah. this is what I watched. You know what I mean? I, I've been trying to get in shape and I'm running a, a half marathon on Sunday. So people will snapchat really? me and say. They'll be like, Jason, you look great. You've inspired me to get in shape. You're yeah. so old and you're doing it. I can do it too. <laughs> and, and what they, what they so don't. Old. Yeah, Who they would do say that? Like, oh, every, everybody. I mean, that, that's, that's, that's what they say. I mean, it's, 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 I think that's the, that's the gap. You're that, so old. Is, you're not that old. Well, that's how they know me. I got into David Dobrik's videos. Okay. And I was the old guy in the video. <laughs> okay. I got so, yeah. I, I, so, that, I, I, that's why. But, that's, yeah, but what they the... don't know is that when they say to me, they're keeping me honest. They're making sure that I fucking go out tomorrow morning and get to the gym and, you know, train. And so it, right. it, it's, it, it goes both ways. Yeah. Um, all right, here we go. This okay. is called Rapid Fire Questions. We have uh, two minutes on the clock. Okay. You're just going to fucking answer these questions. Right. Here we go. Cereal, where do you stand on it at this point in your life? Love it. Fruit Loops or Frosted Flakes, go. What? Yeah, man. Sunday, I knew Sunday, it. I knew bro. you were cereal, I work out guy. every fucking day. I deserve a bowl of cereal from cereal. time to time. With Almond whole milk. milk, by the way. I don't care if it gives no! me if it gives me tits. I want them. I want tits. Clip it. Use that. You're missing out, Jess. You fucked up. Ah! She left at the worst possible time. Ah! We're killing. We're fucking killing. This podcast is going to win an Emmy! And she leaves while my mother's dying? I can't believe, I, I can't believe she fucking got up during the fucking, the, the mother's dying story. Well, who does that? You, I like the way we just, just my mom's real death Dave, just became the woman dying story. Dude, I'm crying. I literally have tears in my eyes. You're telling me the fucking- My asshole's sweating. Put the air on in here, dude! We can't. The Why? Sound, we can't. The sound will be good. I'm like LeBron okay. at the foul line in here. Put it on. Put it on. Put it on. I can't believe she walked out during that. Oh. I can't wait to tell everybody she did that. Oh my god. Because it was. Oh, thank I mean, God. Dane, that was like a. That was like a fucking monologue. That was like a fucking, fucking gorgeous monologue, and she we'll fucking goes up it. to get her salad. We'll cut around. Okay, come on. Florida or Hawaii? I don't know about that. <laughs> This is entertainment. If you're not entertained, you're Terrible. a sociopath. Well, go ahead. Florida or what? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, good. Makeup? Oh, I forgot this. I forgot. Ragtag group of people with no fucking makeup. I'm on a shitty podcast. <laughs> and not what across is this, Jessica by the way? Huh? What is this? We had a flower and it died. What, but what is this like? Yeah, oh, we, we got to get something there. Oh, oh, I thought that uh, we we're going to cremate somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it's my career. <laughs> Go ahead. Florida or Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> well, since my mom died in Florida and I was in Hawaii, I'm going to go with Hawaii. Perfect. Okay, perfect. I, lo I love Hawaii. <laughs> that is weird. Did you ever go there? Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Maui. Did you cuff your jeans like I did growing up in Boston? No. Wow. No. I went more like boot cut, flare, bell bottom look. Oh. Wow, it feels good in here now. Thank you for that. Ooh. Have you ever been roasted? Yeah, I did a roast, and they roasted me. 
Where? I did like the Dennis Leary roast on Comedy Central. Uh, Not my forte. I wasn't very good at roasting, and I also don't like hurting people's feelings, and I don't like my feelings hurt. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> What's the most amount of money you've ever made in one night? In one night? Um, a one night. I'm trying to think. Like I did, a, I did like 150 arenas, and a couple of them, like at the end of the night, you'd see the... Um, you know, the documents, all the wire info. And a couple of times it pushed a million. Yeah. You get that on your phone. It's, I'd be in the, I'd go after, I'd be like, all right, let's see how we did. Yeah, where would yeah. you go after? To the office or? Yeah, like, so like you'd be in like the, whatever it was, the Air Canada Center at the time. They'd be like, all right, 18,000 people and let's see that. And I'd be like, all right, calling merch. I'd be like, what merch is 48,000? Okay, let me add it to that. So there were certain nights where you just roll out of there and be like, I am a baller. Fucking dope. And a shot caller. Damn. Uh, what's the most... This oh. is the least rapid fire rapid fire I've ever... <laughs> this is like atrophy. <laughs> Fuck. I'm getting rheumatoid arthritis waiting for you to ask a question. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> this is taking so long that the colors in the paint behind us on this wall are starting to They're fade. They're not even good. <laughs> you know, we had Joe Gatto here from fucking... Uh, from Impractical Joker, so I've never done two in a day, so this is not, they're not even good. Let's just keep going. I was, really? You, you, you lined me up at, you must be so low blood sugar at this point. No, no, I think I've been good. Okay. Ever, ever hold, gotten yourself? Hold on one second, no, hold on. Jesus hold Christ, on. Grand Central Station in here. <laughs> She's a fan. She's a fan? Yeah. She threw her hands up in the air like I just asked Dennis her. Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary? <laughs> what? <laughs> Um, <laughs> do you have any regrets? <laughs> As a person who really doesn't subscribe to that thinking, knowing what I know now about how informative things falling apart are, I will say, I wish I could have spent more time in my 20s with people and doing things that mm. were more geared to, toward that time in my life. So yeah, just time spent. Mm -hmm. If I had a do-over, I'd... There was definitely hours I could have been like, ah, let me whatever, hang with the fam more. Or like, you couldn't have. I couldn't have, but life is fleeting, and you don't learn that till later, and you go like, oh, man, I could have probably put a few more wins in the wind column with that person in my life. Yeah. Um, but everything for a reason. We'll see him again. You have the world's... <laughs> is this expensive? <laughs> what is this? You have the world's record for longest stand-up set. What's the most you've ever masturbated? No, I don't. <laughs> that is misinformation. You have the world record for longest stand-up at, at the Laugh Factory. At the Laugh Factory. I have a Laugh Factory record. You have the Laugh Factory record for longest stand-up set. What's the most you've ever masturbated? <laughs> Fuck you. Next question. Hardest you part of put some flowers in this thing. <laughs> okay, we'll get it. Hardest part about performing in Iraq. Oh my goodness! For the for the troops, oh boy, that was that feels like the that's the hardest part is being in Iraq and knowing at any point. <laughs> at one point, one of the generals, after I got off, not on stage, I'd be like performing on rocks yeah. for all the troops with their weapons. You know, yeah. they're sitting there. We can't say uh, Indian style. What crisscross applesauce? Crisscross. And the then they'd send me a drone picture of me from like three miles up. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was. You're always like, oh my god, where are we? This yeah, is. But, you know, the, but the troops absolutely the love best, that you're the there. The greatest to this day have a lot of correspondence with. Yeah. You know, servicemen and women that were over there. The best, one of the most gratifying things what, I could have done. What but they, scary. What, what did they say to you when you show up in Iraq? Like, what they did, what they, they were say? like, well, they were blown away because uh, I didn't just go to Baghdad and do the PR thing. Right. I had them take me out to like. FOBs in places that nobody goes. Yeah. Because I was like, I'm really not here for the PR thing. I'm here because my dad served in Korea and I want to yeah. take me out there. So they would Apache me out or Blackhawk helicopter me to like places where they didn't even know I was coming. That's fucking the sick. Best. It was awesome. Uh, Larry the Cable Guy, does he get it done? Does he get it done? <laughs> what does that mean? He's got an incredible career. Yeah. He's doing more of the car stuff. And I know. Cars TV show. I mean, I, I'd love that gig. I, I love Larry the Cable Guy. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I don't yeah, know yeah. him personally, so I wish I had but some. Didn't you like, do the movie with him? What? No. Oh, you did Planes. I did uh, Planes. He did Cars. Oh, fuck. I fucked yeah. up. Planes was Sorry. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ever met Tom from MySpace? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Where is he now? Uh, he's 
living large with the money he made from MySpace, and he loved photography. He just travels the world taking pictures, wow. and they're great. You should follow him on whatever he's on now. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> F. Mary Kill, Jessica Simpson, Kate Hudson, or Jessica Alba? That's a big pass on this one. That is... <laughs> that is... <laughs> Oh my God, Kate, we'll pay for it. We'll pay for it. Guys, this is Dan Cook. This is somebody that you need to go, uh, go to his website. You need to watch his special and you need to follow him because- I love you, buddy. Thank you for having uh, Dan, me on thank here, man. you so Are much. Are you kidding you, me? You're, he's such a special guy. I've been, this is my favorite podcast. No. I, can I tell you why? I've you just had TJ Miller on. That was like, that's everywhere. No, this, this, this I've learned something. <laughs> I have I have problems. I have a lot of problems, and you've actually like helped me through. You know how you said you mentor people? Yeah. I mean, you've mentored me today, so thank you. And hey, th man, this was really coming. really wonderful. I feel like we um, I feel like we hit all the components that you want in a great robust conversation. <laughs> Funny, heartwarming. People walked out on me in the middle of it. We talked about death. We talked about porn. Yeah. You know, Jess. I broke shit. <laughs> yeah. I passed on certain things. I stood up for myself. Boundaries were set. <laughs> I mean, a lot of this is unusable <laughs> because you're just going to hear Jess typing really loud on a keyboard over there. I think she like resented me. I almost feel like she was writing me. I feel that channel. way every day. That's, like, that's how she I makes you feel. enjoyed your comedy. Yeah. That's how she makes you feel. But no, can I be sincere for a second? Please. When I say, I've been a fan, I like what you do, and Please. the fact that you asked me and reached out to me personally and said, would you do it? And then I reached out personally and said, you got me? Yeah. Um, that means a lot to me, so Aww. appreciate it. Thank you, man. Yeah, no, man. thank you. I, I'm so glad you're here. I can't believe you came. And, uh, All right, buddy, wrap it up. <laughs> we'll wrap it up. Guys, you're we'll, rambling. See, we'll see you next week. Go check out. Go check out. No, I know. <laughs> Well, go check out uh, Dane Cook's new special at danecook.com. Above it all. Above it all. Okay, bye, guys. Bye.